Now we'd all like to have a little bit more speed and a little bit more distance on our drives and even our iron shots. Now I've put together three of my best videos of all time that are gonna help you to improve your speed and increase your distance right away. Let's go and get started. Using the hips in the golf swing is something that we all wanna to do to create a lot of club head speed and be able to hit those really booming drives, be able to outdrive our friends. But I find a lot of players struggle to use the hips properly. It actually has to do with how your legs or your upper leg and knees specifically are angled. If they're not angled in the correct position of the swing, then we're gonna have a really tough time opening those hips. Let me go over the right way and the wrong way to do this, get you to open up those hips, and then we're gonna track that using my flight scope to boost the speed. Let's go and get started. All right, so this is a series of videos I'm doing kind of showing what I use my flight scope with. So for those of you who aren't familiar with this, this is called a flight scope X3. This is their newest model of radar. Pretty expensive machine. These will run you about $18,000. This has a, a, basically sends out a radio waves or electromagnetic waves that bounce off of my golf club, the ball, everything that's happening right here through contact. So as I swing through this golf ball, it's tracking how my club head is moving, whether my face is open or closed, whether it's moving to the right or to the left, up or down. It's really tracking it within, within a degree of what's happening. So really, really precise. It's also tracking what we'll be talking about in this video, <clears throat> excuse me, is how fast this club head is moving. So what it does is it finds the center of this club head, what's called the geometric center, right in the middle of this club head, if you can imagine that, and then it tracks how that moves through space to get my club head speed. That's what we're gonna really be focusing on and showing how using the hips properly can make this happen a little bit easier. It also tracks the ball as it flies through there and gives me some really cool numbers on ball spin, uh, launch angles, all that kind of stuff, and how fast the ball leaves the face. So we'll be looking at some of that when we're talking about this drill, the correct and incorrect way of doing this. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hit some swings here. Let's go ahead and cast from the top, show how to improperly use these hips, and let's see what my numbers are on my flight scope. So in this swing, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just turn off my body. And what happens with players that tend to cast, they're not rotating the hips and the body enough then they're having to use all hands and arms, and we're starting to throw this club to try to gain some speed with this club head right from the top of the swing. Our body, being good athletes, we understand that if we don't use our body, we're gonna have to use our hands and arms to try to get some speed, and typically people will do that by getting a cast. So in this one, I'm not gonna have my body working very much, my legs and hips moving very much, and let's have a look at what numbers this spits out for me. Uh, tough to swing at all. I almost just completely topped that one. I have the toughest time making contact when I cast because I just can't feel where the club head is. I know you guys probably have the same experience when you're casting or coming over the top. That's one good side note here. I think everybody's a lot better athletes than they realize they are. A lot of times somebody with a cast, just being able to get the ball in the fairway, being able to hit it in the fairway at all with any amount of speed is really tough to do. When I try to cast in my videos, when I purposely try to get the cast, I can't hit the golf ball a decent shot two times in a row. We saw that one, I almost hit it maybe 100 yards or something along those lines, and I barely made contact on the face whatsoever. My club head speed went all the way down to 90 miles an hour. That's a little bit less than the average male club head speed. So maybe you're swinging 90 right now, and you have the ability to swing over 100, 110, 115. You don't really know until we get the proper technique and find out. So we saw there 90 miles an hour club head speed. That's gonna be the main number I'm looking at here with my flight scope and what it's telling me I'm doing. So we're gonna see if we can get that a little bit better. My distance, my carry distance was only 126. Obviously that was not a good shot. And my ball speed, see if I can find that on here, was 118 miles an hour. That means whenever I hit this ball, it left the face at 118 miles an hour. Not really that great. What was I doing wrong in that swing that caused me to hit that, to do the cast? And how can I fix that if I wanna do this properly? What I find is, when players keep their knees facing forward, so if I make this incorrect swing, as I start my downswing, I keep my knee, you can imagine a line kind of coming out of this, my knee stays in front of me and it's almost angled back in as I rotate through. That turns off my lower body and I have to use all this arm speed and hand and wrist speed to try to accelerate the club head and it doesn't work very well. What I wanna be doing, as soon as I start down, I wanna feel like I keep my hips a little bit back if I slide my hips forward, I'm not gonna be able to rotate. I wanna keep my hips a little bit back. And my first thing I wanna do is get my knees going forward. So my right knee is gonna be angled forward. If you can imagine a laser kind of shooting out of that, it's going forward. And my left knee is gonna be angled forward. So if you look at my upper femur, 
or this angle of my leg, it's pointed out here. The reason that makes a big difference is I have to use my feet and pressure in the ground to rotate my hips. And when I get my left leg angled forward, that puts in a, me, my legs in a position to where when I push out, that rotates me open. That's my body getting in a good position to be able to rotate really well and use my hips. My right foot does the same thing. As that knee goes forward, my right foot kind of gets angled out and now I can push into the ground to get my right hip rotating forward. And that helps with your club head speed. What I want you to do is a few practice swings here. Go to the top of the swing. And the first thing I want you to do is feel like your hips stay back a little bit. You open up your legs, your, your upper legs, and you get your knees forward from there and keep the club back and from the inside. So I don't want to do this and start coming over the top and over the top casting type motion. I want to have that club from the inside. And then from there, I'm going to rotate everything through with my hips and really come to that good full finish as I rotate through to the full finish there. And that's going to help me to get a little bit more lag it's also going to help me to keep my hips moving. So watching this video, you'll see my hips rotate much better in this one, and I'm able to get a lot higher club head speed, or hopefully get a lot higher club head speed. My last club head speed was 90, 126 carry. <laughs> I think I'll be able to beat that one. Let's see what I can do here. There we go. Killed that one right down the middle of the fairway. Not gonna be able to do a ton better than that one. And we'll take a look at the slow motion video here in a second. My club head speed went up to 115, hit that one dead solid. My carry distance was 311, pretty good. I can't do much better than that. My total distance was 325. So I added about 25 miles an hour club head speed. I carried the ball, you know, whatever it was, 200 yards farther, <laughs> something like that. And my ball speed before was, I believe, 118. And now my ball speed went up to 167.5. So almost 170 ball speed, that's pretty solid. So the key takeaways there are, number one, you may have a faulty technique that's slowing you down. You may be a much better athlete than you realize. You may have a lot more club head speed left in the bag if we let our lower body and our hips and our legs angle in the right way and use those legs in the, in the, the correct way. And number two, we got to get those legs pointing forward. If my legs are pointing back, there's no way I can really push into the ground and rotate. If I get my legs kind of moving this way, now I can really rotate my hips and gain a lot of speed. If you're right-handed, it's completely natural to take the right side of your body. We're looking down at this ball and we want the ball to go that way. It's natural to take your right arm, your right hand, your right leg and think, okay, I'm gonna put effort into this club. I'm gonna get my club head speed by pushing everything toward the target. That's the way I grew up playing. And it makes a lot of sense. The harder we push toward the target, that should be the faster the club head speed and the faster the ball is gonna be moving. But in reality, that's actually the wrong idea. If we push toward the target, it's gonna slow down our swing speed. I'm gonna talk about how that's the wrong idea. We're gonna put it to the measurement, put it to the test on the flight scope, and we're gonna talk about the right idea, which is moving away from the target. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's talk about this first idea and this pushing toward the target. Well, that was the way I always visualize the golf swing. Like I said, I'm right-handed, there's the ball, there's the target. I'm just gonna push it right on down there, and the harder I do that, the more my club head speed is gonna increase. That's the idea that I had. Let's go ahead and put that to the test. I'll hit a drive here, and my mental, um, my, my visualization on this one is gonna be to take the palm of my right hand take the, my right shoulder, my right leg, and just get that thing going as hard toward the target as I can. Let's go ahead and let one rip, and let's see what it says here on the flight scope. Yeah, so I swung hard. I put out a lot of effort. I actually hit the ball pretty daggone solid, so my numbers are gonna be pretty decent there. But let's check out the club head speed and see what that said. So on that one, my club head speed was 111.5, so it's not terrible. You hit a good shot and you think, oh, I'm really onto something there. That right side push, that stuff really works. My carry distance was 275 because I absolutely hit it dead solid. And then my, my total distance was 299.4. So let's talk about why that's the wrong thing and how we'd actually tap into a little bit more swing speed. Okay, so recently I was actually watching a video with Sasha McKenzie. He's one of the top golf biomechanists out there. And he had a great example um, 
with a sledgehammer. He was on one of Cordy Walker's uh, videos, podcast, and he was taking a sledgehammer and I thought, man, what a great way to show people where the forces are happening in the swing. And if we take that right side dominant swing, again, here's my right hand. Let's imagine this is a golf club. I got my right hand. I'm trying to push this sledgehammer toward the ball. What's gonna end up happening is it's actually pulling us toward the target. So I'm gonna try to make a swing here. This is pretty hard to do. I'll make a full swing. You see how it's gonna kind of take me off toward the target like that. It's pulling all my weight forward. Well, in the golf swing, if we visualize the golf swing that way, we're not actually getting as much speed as we could be getting. What the golf swing should be happening and, and to stay in balance and to get that club whipping through contact is we actually want to feel like we're pulling away from the target. So in this, so the swing, same thing happens with your golf club. Once you get a normal weight golf club moving with some speed, all that momentum wants to start to carry it forward. And if we want to keep that thing accelerating and to get it to whip through contact with a lot of speed, we actually need to feel like we're pushing down and out with our left leg. I'm clearing my left shoulder kind of backing up. I'm clearing my left arm and my left hip backing up that way. And if I do that, if I swing this sledgehammer, now when I have this backward feeling, what's happening is that actually accelerates the sledgehammer or the club more than it would if I'm just trying to push it forward. So that's what Dr. Sasha McKenzie found when he did his research, actually put some numbers to what players are doing, some of the top players are doing with the force and the handle of the club. What he found is that players, as they're coming through contact, instead of pushing forward toward the target, he actually found that once you get all this lag, I'm gonna pull this club back and up. The force is actually going kind of back over my left shoulder or behind my left shoulder as I'm coming through contact or as all the top players are coming through contact. Nobody was trying to push the club toward the target at that point that was swinging really fast. If you wanna swing 120 miles an hour, or what would be considered the elite pro level, found that that had about 110 pounds of force going this direction, that way. And the reason that is, because this club lags, and if I can pull, if I can get the force of the club going kind of back behind me, that's gonna let this club whip on through. So you imagine if I just pull straight up on this club, watch what happens to the club head. It whips through, it accelerates. Because the club head's lagging behind, it wants to catch up with the way my hand's going. If I just try to pull this club that way, it's not gonna accelerate as fast. I'm actually losing some speed. So in a nutshell, really good golf swings. As you're coming through contact, everything is clearing back up out of the way. That allows you to get those long arms. That allows you to really finish in a good posture like you see the pros doing. And most importantly, that allows you to get big speed without a lot of mus muscle effort. So now let's put a, let's do a drill to put this to the test. Let's actually start working in the right direction, the right way. What I want you guys to feel like you're doing, let's go ahead and drop the club for now. Let's just put your hands across your shoulders. Now from here, as you start your downswing, I want these hips to go ahead and start opening up. And I want you to feel like when you're pushing down into the ground, that you're opening your shoulders you're letting your body come on through, but you're pushing your body back. I don't want to feel like you're doing this and coming forward. I want to feel like we're shifting to the left and then from there clearing out of the way. And if I do this correctly, I'll feel like my chest is nice and high. If I do it incorrectly, I'll have this position where my chest is down to the ground. I want to feel like my chest is nice and high. I want to feel like my belt buckle is toward the target. And most importantly, I want to feel like my left shoulder clears out of the way all the way into the finish. So if I just have my arms across the shoulders, get in a good 10 reps just doing this. So I shift to the left, everything clears out of the way, my chest is high, my left shoulder has come all the way around, and now I'm at that good full finish position. So that's the first piece, we get that body working the correct way. Now let's add the club to that. So the only way to get this to happen correctly is we have to have some lag. If I don't have any lag and I'm casting this club, if I pull to the left, it's not really accelerating the club. Remember, this club had to be lagging behind so that when we pulled, it whipped on through there. So I, what I want you to do now is make a little half swing and pause when you're about halfway down, when your hands are in front of your right thigh. You're gonna watch, want your club to be parallel with the ground and you have a big angle of lag here. So from there, I'm gonna pair that up with that body position that I just worked on. So I'm gonna come halfway down, good amount of lag, your legs are really bent and engaged. And then from there, that good full finish position, chest high, shoulder all the way on through. What you'll get a feel of as you do some little mini swings, you start to go a little farther, farther back, is that momentum of the club is really whipping on through there. So if I'm casting, I won't have anything left. So you're doing five or 10, pausing, making sure you're in the right spot, and then coming on through. Then you're gonna get that same feeling, five or 10 more, 
a little bit more momentum, really getting that club to whip on through. And then once you build that muscle memory, once you get the feel for that, go ahead, let it rip. Go out to the driving range, see how fast you can hit one doing that. Let's put it to test on my flight scope. All right, hammered that one. Nice draw around the corner there. That's gonna be picking up a little bit of swing speed and a little bit faster. So remember in the original one where I had the idea that I'm gonna to push toward the target, my club head speed was 111.5. This one jumped up to 123.3. So I really put a pretty good rip on that one. Didn't hit it quite as solid, but my carry, or my carry distance went up, I think about 13, 14 yards. My total distance went up about 20 yards. So that one was 319.4. So even if you're already swinging pretty fast, you may have another five or 10 miles an hour in there that you don't know about, that you haven't realized yet. Even if you're, or if you're not swinging as fast, this could be the thing that really puts you over the edge. So no matter what your swing speed is, it could be 80, it could be 120, try this out. This is the proper way to put force in the club. All the research backs it up. And if you can do this, it's really gonna help your game. Now I bet you've been told that swing speed, that power, comes from the hips and the legs. Big muscles in the legs, they got a lot of speed, a lot of power, makes you feel like that's where it's happening from. Well, let me try to put that to the test here a little bit. If I was to lock my arms and try not to move my upper body, my upper body's gonna move a little bit as I'm doing this, but just rotate my legs and my hips and just hit with my body. So no arm action at all, no real shoulder action separate, separating my shoulders from my hips. Let's see how much swing speed I can get. Dead straight. I think I hit that about as solid as I've ever hit a shot in my life. Nice and straight, nice and solid. 64 miles an hour of swing speed, 94 yards in the, in the air, something like that. Not gonna be able to hit it very far unless you use your upper body, your shoulders and your arms. Now for argument's sake, let's go ahead and lock the hips. And this little device I have here is called a PRGR Black. And I've tested it with my $18,000 launch monitor and it's within one to two miles an hour every single time with swing speed. So pretty cool device, I highly recommend it. Let me lock off my hips now, and I'm just gonna swing just all arms. Now again, I realize I'm, I'm using my legs slightly. You can't truly turn off your legs and just use all arms, but I'm gonna do my best job of just trying to swing all arms. The last one again was, uh, I can't even remember now, maybe 60 miles an hour or something like that. Now let's just use all upper body and see how much swing speed we can get there. There we go, that ball went a lot farther. And again, I know my hips barely moved a little bit. That one I've swung 107 miles an hour, much, much faster. Obviously that ball flew a whole heck of a lot farther. So the real key here is realizing it's not to turn off your hips and not use them at all. It's definitely not to turn off your shoulders and your arms and not use those at all. It's about using the entire body. Now I have two drills that are gonna help you a ton. The first drill is gonna help you get the fast muscles. Those are your shoulders and your arms, your wrist. We're gonna get that lag and we're gonna let that really snap on through there. That's where you get a lot of the speed from. Again, I swung 107 pretty much just using those muscles. Then to get the rest of the swing speed, we're gonna add the hips and the lower body, really get that thing cranking and see if you can get your best drive ever. All right, so what I've done here is I've set up my golf bag. I would normally do this with something a little smoother than this. I just wanna give you the idea and then you can recreate it with your own bag. Um, just a countertop, whatever you have. Take your club, turn it upside down. And then what I want you to do is we're gonna make our back swing. We're gonna pause when this club is on this bag. Now for here, I have this bag located a little less than a driver width behind my golf ball. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna feel like I keep my club on this bag, this grip on this bag, and I'm gonna open up my body. Notice how my hips are opening up, I'm clearing out of the way. And what I do is I have a ton of lag here. I got this big angle set in my wrist. So what this causes me to do, because this is about the same length as a driver, I can have my hands already over top of this golf ball. And then from there, I still have all this lag. And I'm gonna try to, as soon as this club comes off the bag, I'm gonna try to accelerate as hard as I can. Most people hit up here. I'd be smacking the heck out of this golf bag losing all my lag, burning up all that speed from my shoulders and my arms, which we talked about as the important part. This is gonna train you to get the speed down here at the golf ball. So as soon as that comes off the bag, then I'm gonna really be fast. I'm using my shoulders, my arms, and my wrist just to get as much swing speed as I can there. Now you're not gonna get a ton of swing speed with this drill, but 
when we get that feeling and then we add it to the lower body, that's when your speed is really gonna take off. So now, let's do the same thing. I'm gonna feel like I have a bunch of lag here. You're gonna notice how my right heel comes off the ground a little bit. My right toe is on the ground. And then from there, I'm really gonna feel like I'm pushing off, almost like if I'm a, I'm a pitcher and I'm letting that heel come up. I'm gonna feel like I push off that right leg and then my left toe is gonna to come off the ground. I'm gonna go back on my left heel like that. So my feet, I want them to spin. So I'm gonna have this really late hit. I'm gonna to get to here and then I'm gonna open up my body and throw the club as hard as I can coming on through there. Now you'll notice Bryson DeChambeau has kind of a weird looking swing. This is exactly what he's doing with his feet. That's because he's trying to get as much force as he can from his lower body, from his hips, from his entire body basically. And those two drills together are, able, are gonna allow you to get speed at the ball, which is what really matters the most. So do a few reps of both of them individually, and then we're gonna put them together and we're gonna see how much swing speed we got. All hips, 60 miles an hour. All arms, 107, 108, something like that. Now let's put it together. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a big rip here. And let's see if we can at least get into the 120s. Maybe even a little high 120s would be awesome. There we go, nice straight drive, right down the middle. 127 on my club head speed. You can probably see that on my PRGR. Again, cool little device, because you can put this right into your golf bag, leave it there all the time. I have one with me all the time. So that's a gr those two drills together are gonna help you to get some of the highest swing speeds and the best distance that you ever had. Now. You can't really stop there. I'm gonna be dead honest with you. If you just take what I did right there, you're gonna have trouble getting that lag. And one of the reasons is, and you may not have picked up on this, but if I was to stand up, my hands would get higher, my body would back out of the way from this, and I couldn't get off that golf bag and swing down and hit the golf ball. Now, if I'm just swinging the butt into my club and I have it on that golf bag and I have lag and I get everything whipping through there, that may be really fast but I can still stand up and do that. So I can have the club on the bag, I can stand up and throw it, and I feel like I'm going fast, but when I put a ball there, it's not gonna transfer over. I'm not gonna see the same speed. The piece that's missing is getting the hands low and staying in the posture. Now I have a drill, it's perfect for this, it's called the knuckle dragger drill. So what we're gonna do in this drill is we're gonna talk about the right way to move the body so that your knuckles and arms get low. If you notice when I was, had that bag there, my hands were pretty low when I was getting this lag, and then I was releasing out in front, so I would have been able to hit the golf ball. It would have transferred over to a real swing with the drill that I was doing. Now that knuckle dragger drill is a game changer. Once you start to get your hands lower, now it makes sense how I can have all this daggone lag because I'm gonna release all that and still be able to reach the ball. If I do this and stand up out of it, even if I have a ton of lag, it wouldn't do me any good I wouldn't be able to reach the ball. So I'm gonna to start to cast to be able to reach down and get it. I'm gonna play a preview of that knuckle dragger drill here in just one second. All you're gonna to wanna to do is just go ahead and click that circle with some text that pops up on your screen. It's called a card. If you don't see the card, don't worry. Go down to the link below that's in the description below this video and you'll get instant access to it there. You pair up the drills that we did here today with that knuckle dragger drill, hey, you got the complete package. Best of luck, I can't wait to show you the knuckle dragger. I got an awesome video for you. This one is what I call knuckle dragger. And this is one of the best ones, one of the big missing pieces to players that are struggling to get more lag. Now let's talk about when you lose lag, what's happening. A lot of times what's happening is as you make your downswing, if we're looking from this down the line view, what happens is my hips go toward the golf ball. They start to slide forward. My chest moves back away from this golf ball. So I'm getting farther away from the golf ball. And then all of a sudden I cast I flip and I don't have a lot of lag there. Well, look how far my hands are away from the ground. Also notice when I get my hands closer to the ground, so as my hands get lower, then what happens is they also go forward more. So as I want to have more lag, when you feel like your knuckles are dragging the ground, then that club is naturally going to lag back behind and then you're going to release that out in front. When your hands are far away from the ground, well, if I had all that lag, where would I be swinging? I'd be swinging a foot over top of the golf ball. So you have to kind of flip, release that lag early 
to just make contact with the golf ball at all. So having those knuckles feeling like they're scraping the ground is really gonna be a big key. Now another piece to this, again, when I talked about having losing that posture, your hips go forward. You're gonna wanna feel like as those hands scrape the ground, your knuckles drag the ground.